Hi everyone, I'm Lorenzo and in this video I'm going to talk about all Dragon Ball Z games for the Sony PlayStation 2. Dragon Ball Z sagas, even if the game reviewers on the internet are claiming that the game is repetitive and dull, I enjoyed it. And it's among my favorite GameCube games of all time. I played the game on GameCube first. But it's the same game on PS2, don't worry. In the game you get 3D spaces and have to beat up small fry and then you get to one-on-one -on -one boss battle matches. The game consists of 19 levels split into multiple sagas, the Saiyan Saga, Ginyu Saga, Frieza Saga, Yargrad Saga, Trunk Saga, Android Saga and the Cell Game Saga. The music is great, you start with very few moves, but as you collect more coin you can unlock more moves. There are 14 playable characters and the levels are diverse and detailed. I enjoyed the game. And as I said, it's among my favorites. The story elements and the music along with the good gameplay hooked me. I will replay this game anytime. Dragon Ball Z Budokai is for non-fans a basic fighting game. The game consists of one-on-one -on -one battles and in between fights you get story elements. But for fans, it retells the stories and it does it in an enjoyable fashion. I like the cutscenes in the game. It's one of the few games in this list that have rendered cutscenes and they are very nice to look at. As stories you get the Saiyan Saga, the Namekian Saga, the Android Saga and the Cell Game Saga. And it's nice that they added bonus what if levels after you've completed a saga, so that you can see what would have happened if say the villain would have won. The game has 23 playable characters and each character has multiple forms, Goku has 5 different forms for example. And not only forms, but you can unlock different costumes too for different characters. And the fighting, the core of the game, well, it feels very similar to other fighting games. But it's still an enjoyable experience for both fans and non-fans of the series. It's the type of game that is for everyone. You just pick it up and like and like it the second you start it. In Budokai 2, the story isn't told as in Budokai 1. But now Budokai 2 features a new Dragon World mode which is essentially a board game where you control a team of Dragon Ball Z heroes as they move around on a series of maps while fighting bad guys and collecting Dragon Balls. Where Budokai covers the events of Dragon Ball Z up to the Cell Game Saga, Budokai 2 covers the events of the Dragon Ball Z series up to the Kid Buu Saga. While the first game uses a chapter interface to guide the player through the sagas, Budokai 2 uses a much different interactive game board. Each game board represents a different saga of the series, and since the game covers events up to Kid Buu saga, it includes characters and transformations seen after the Cell Game saga. So there are 38 characters in the game, all with different forms and costumes to unlock, and there are 9 battle stages in the game. In Budokai 3, the fighting gets a lot of death. Now you don't just get key attacks and ultimate attacks and transformations, but you can also teleport behind your opponent's back and he can do, but you can counter the teleportation. You also get beam struggles if two beam attacks collide, instead of cancelling each other out, a beam struggle is activated and you need to rotate the control stick as fast as possible. Another addition is that characters can fatigue now. Each character has a fatigue bar next to the life bar. You also get hyper mode, by pressing L2 a character enters hyper mode, they turn red, their key slowly decreases and they lose the ability to block. In hyper mode the character is immune to most weak melee attacks. Hyper mode is necessary to start dragon rushes and ultimate attacks. Dragon rush occurs if a character knocks another character away while in hyper mode, that character can start a dragon rush. A Dragon Rush is a 3 part game of chance where both characters choose one of the 4 buttons. If the defender can pick the same button as the attacker, the Dragon Rush is ended. However, after each part the number of buttons is decreased. If all 3 parts connect, the attacking character launches a powerful finisher. You also get the ability to fly in the game. Also now Budokai doesn't have the annoying board story storytelling like the previous one, but it has Dragon Universe. You can hover with 11 characters over a map and select the future actions. It's not exciting either, but just like the board, it 
works out. And since this story advances even further than in the other games, this one has 41 playable characters, each with specific transformations and costumes. Oh, and this game has Goku and Vegeta go up to Super Saiyan 4. And there are 12 battle arenas. Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tengaichi makes the experience from Budokai even greater. Now the camera shifts behind your chosen character and you don't fight into the environment. You get to rotate around the arena too. You get destructible environments, the storytelling is weak in this game, at least I didn't like it. And unlike the Budokai series, there are no in-game transformations. You select the character in his transformed form before starting the match. You can transform mid-battle. But even if the storytelling is weaker, the battles sure are more exhilarating. There are 54 characters in the game without counting each of the characters different forms. And there are 11 battle arenas. In Tenkaichi 2, they improved the experience even more. Now you can transform in battle and you get so many different stories from the anime that it's a must have for any fan. You get 126 playable characters and 16 battle arenas, destructible environments and as for the stories, the game covers Dragon Ball Z to Dragon Ball GT and also includes the movie stories The Three of the Might, Lord Slug, Cooler's Revenge, The Return of Cooler, Super Android 13, Broly the Legendary Super Saiyan, Bojack Unbound, Broly, Second Coming, Fusion Reborn and Wrath of the Dragon, as well as the TV special stories Bardrock, The Father of Goku and The History of Trunks. The outcome of the battles in the mode changes the course of the story. New powers, characters and what if stories are unlocked in this mode. The craziest part about Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tengaichi 3 is the number of playable characters. This game has 161 characters. It almost reaches the record holder Tobal 2, the PS1 game that has around 200 playable characters. Now most battle arenas have dawn and night settings too, and there are 23 battle stages. Other features in the game include more combo attacks or character specific combos, the blast combos and the z-burst dash, and this game again touches all the Dragon Ball animes known at that time, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT and numerous films. The controls feel better now and are more intuitive, basically everything is way better in this game, making it not only the best Dragon Ball game on the system, but a monster experience overall. An experience that, no matter if you are a Dragon Ball fan or not, you should try the game. It's a marvel. In Dragon Ball Z Infinite War, the fighting is great. It is similar to Shin Budokai for the PSP. You can transform into levels, you have key attacks, and from the video you can see how the battles unfold. I don't have to insist on this aspect. You get 40 playable characters. The core of the game, the fighting, is a lot of fun. So. As a fighting game, Dragon Ball Z Infinite World is great. Super Dragon Ball Z feels like a Street Fighter game. And it's not a bad thing, it's enjoyable. You get all the moves we got from past iterations, and the action is fast paced. This game is good for hardcore fighting game fans too, not just for Dragon Ball fans. You get destructible environments, and since the game covers the story from the manga, the art style looks like a colored manga page. You get 18 playable characters and 8 locations, and it's nice that you can customize the playable characters. You don't create a new one, but you can for example change the clothes color or assign another character's attack to a specific character. And as a conclusion I want to tell you that I enjoyed each one of the Dragon Ball games for the PlayStation 2. They range from great fighting games to marvelous experiences that retell you the story of multiple sagas and they are so content rich that it's amazing how much they cramped into one file. I mean Tenkaichi 3 is a must have, and as well as the Tenkaichi Trilogy and the rest of the games, but especially the Tenkaichi Trilogy. And it's nice that you don't need to be a fan to enjoy the games, they can be picked up by anyone and be enjoyed. So if you stumble upon a Dragon Ball game for the PlayStation 2, just pick it up.
pick it up and it's going to be great for sure no matter which one it is they are all great all of them okay so this was the video if you liked it please hit the like button and subscribe and if you want follow me on twitch instagram or discord i left the links to those in the video description also if you want to see another video of mine just wait till i stop talking and tell will be thumbnails of other videos i made thanks for watching